ओके सो वी आर डन विद द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ किडनी एंड डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द किडनी दैट इज यूरेटर है ना यूरेटर यूरेथ्रा यूरेटर एंड नाउ वी विल स्टार्टिंग विद द स्ट्रक्चरल एंड फंक्शनल यूनिट ऑफ किडनी दैट इज द नेफ्रॉन सो नेफ्रॉन इज द पार्ट ऑफ द किडनी विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कैरिंग आउट द फंक्शंस ऑफ किडनी दैट इज फिल्ट्रेशन ऑसमो रेगुलेशन एब्जॉर्बन री एब्जॉर्बन ऑल दैट नाउ वी नो दैट नेफ्रॉन आर अराउंड इन वन किडनी अराउंड वन मिलियंस ऑफ नेफ्रॉन्स आर फाउंड सो दे आर वेरी ह्यूज इन नंबर इन द किडनीज ओके सो लेट एस सी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द पोजिशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द पोजिशन द नेफ्रॉन्स कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द पोजिशन दिस नेफ्रॉन्स कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स दैट इज कॉर्टिकल एंड जक्सटा मेडुलरी नेफ्रॉन सो on the basis of position the nephrons can be of two type that is cortical nephrons and juxta medullary nephrons we will be discussing both of them one by one okay so now uh, when this both nephrons that is the cortical and the juxta medullary nephrons both are held together with the help of connective tissue with the help of connective tissue okay so now let us start the first one is a cortical nephron the first one is the cortical nephron now the cortical nephron is basically constituting around 85% of the total nephrons so whatever the number of nephrons are in kidney out of that 85% will be of cortical nephron so let us say in each kidney there will be around 85000 there will be around sorry sorry 8 lakh 50000 8 lakh 50000 okay so there will be around 8 lakh 50000 number of nephrons will be present in one kidney Okay, now the cortical nephrons are comparatively smaller in size. The size is comparatively smaller; so they are smaller in size, with major part lying in the cortex. So the major part of these nephrons will be lying in the cortex, and very small part of the nephron, that is the uh, Bowman's capsule part, will be lying into the medulla. Okay, so this is important. Now the tubule is much coiled. The tubule, which is basically part of this nephron, will be much coiled. So here you can see, this is the part which is called as tubule. Okay, this is basically much coiled in the case of cortical nephrons, and these are the one which are longer one. Loop of Henle is short and extends into medulla to a short distance. So here, this is the loop of Henle. This is the loop of Henle. So in the case of these tubules are very much coiled in the case of cortical nephrons, while this loop of Henle is shorter. This loop of Henle is shorter. Loop of Henle is shorter. Okay, so. And the cortical nephrons altogether are small in size. Okay, tubule is coiled and loop of Henle is shorter. Vas erecta are absent or highly reduced. Vas erecta is basically a specific capillary network of capillary which should be surrounding this loop of Henle. This is the loop of Henle, and surrounding this loop of Henle there will be uh, this dash-like structures which is observed. These are capillaries which are responsible for reabsorption. And this is called as vas erecta. So these vas erecta are almost absent in the case of cortical nephron. They are almost absent in the case of cortical nephron because this loop of Henle will be also so smaller. Okay, glomeruli lie in the outer cortex. Glomerular ray, glomeruli. This is the glomeruli. This is the glomerulus. The, it will be lying in the outer cortex in the case of in the case of cortical nephron. So hence, major part of the major part of the structure. Major part of the structure of cortical nephrons are basically lying in the cortical region. Major part of the structure of cortical nephrons will be lying in the cortical region, and hence they are called as cortical nephrons. And hence they are called as cortical nephrons. Okay. Next is the juxta medullary nephron. So as we saw, as we have seen, what is juxta medullary region? So juxta juxta medullary region is that region where the cortical is present just close to the medulla. Where the cortical is present just close to the medulla. Now this will be the position of this nephrons. So around 50% of the total nephrons are basically juxta medullary in nature. So around 15% of the total nephrons will be juxta medullary in nature. Okay. Now this this are these are basically having large size compared to the cortical nephrons. Compared to the cortical nephrons, they will be having large size. less coiling and the loop on loop of henle will be longer and the loop of henle will be longer so here this is the juxta medullary region suppose so this will be having a large size this loop of henle will be longer loop of henle will be longer and this coil this this 
tubules that is distal convoluted tubules and the proximal convoluted tubules these are not that much coiled these are not that much coiled we can say they are they are less coiled they are coiled less okay now here they will be having this vasa recta will be present so in the case of juxta medullary nephron the vasa recta that is the a network of capillary surrounding this loop of henle will be also present okay now the stuck in medullary nephron juxta medullary nephron become active during shortage of water so their main main function is for reabsorption of water the main function is for reabsorption water and hence they increases the water reabsorption and hence control the volume of plasma you can write it down so what is the main function the main function is to reabsorb the water the main function is to reabsorb water and they activated they get activated when the water amount is low when the water amount is low or we can say they are responsible for maintaining the volume of plasma how does that volume of plasma is maintained by this so when the volume of plasma is high it means that the water is high in the blood when the water is high it means that it will not be reabsorbed but suppose the volume of plasma is low why because it means the blood pressure will be low why because the volume will of plasma will low in blood so we can we have to increase the plasma volume level so how it can be increased by increasing the amount of water so the water should be prevented to get lost okay so we have to protect them we have to reabsorb them and hence the reabsorption will take place so they are mainly getting activated during this particular phase and they are they are active during shortage of water particularly and why because they are responsible for reabsorption of water and therefore control the volume of plasma okay now this system usually works under stress conditions so normally if the person is under the stress condition different type of stress will be discussing so during that condition only this system will be working okay so that was about the juxta medullary nephron let us see the structure of nephron then let us see the structure of nephron so here you can see the structure of nephron yeah let us revise this juxta medullary juxta so here approximately 15% of total they have large size less coiling and loop of long loop of henle okay and the glomeruli occur in the inner cortex long loops of henle placed in deep in the medulla as we have seen so here we have got the long loop of henle and which will be covered or will be surrounded by vasa recta okay and they, they are active only during the shortage of water why because their main function is to reabsorption main function is reabsorption of water and hence they control the volume of plasma okay and they are mainly working under the stress condition now let us see the structure of let us see the structure of the nephron now the nephron has got nephron has got mainly nephron has got mainly three different parts we see what all parts are there first of all this nephron is also called as uriniferous tubule write it down this nephron is called also called as uriniferous tubules or renal tubule it is also called as uriniferous tubule or renal tubule okay now it is around 3 cm long write it down it is around 3 cm long so each nephron will be of around 3 cm long and around 20 to 60 mm in diameter and around 20 to 60 mm in diameter so they are 3 cm long in length and around 20 to 60 mm in diameter okay and each nephron will be consisting of mainly two parts you have to note it on each nephron will be consisting of mainly two parts that is the one was the first one is the glomerulus that is the glomerulus this is the part which is called as glomerulus okay this is the one which is called as glomerulus and other part is basically the renal tubules these are the renal tubules right from beginning here this cup shaped structure c shaped structure you can see this bowman's capsule these all tubules these are proximal convoluted tubules pct loop of henle and this dct all these tubules are basically called as renal tubule okay so here it consists of basically it consists of mainly two two parts the so nephron each nephron consists of two parts the first part is the glomerulus the first part is the glomerulus single it is called as glomerulus and multiple when they are present in plural form they are called as glomeruli okay and the another part is the renal tubules which will be consisting note it down the renal tubules will be consisting bowman's capsule this is a c shaped structure and this the pct that is proximal convoluted tubules then oct the dct that is distal convoluted tubules and this loop of henle this loop of henle this is the loop of henle this you can see this u shape okay so all these are the part of the renal tubules so we will see them each one each by each one by one okay so let us see first of all the bowman's capsule let us see first of all the bowman's capsule okay so what is bowman's capsule the bowman's capsule 
let us see here by diagram okay so bowman's capsule is a she shaped tubule so it's a blind blind double walled cup shaped structure so here by blind what does it mean so here you can see this has got two 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 terminal region this is the one it does not have any opening at the same time over here we can see it does not have any opening so this structure this c structure does not have opening any at and at both of the end they do not have opening at both of the end this c structure or c tubule does not have opening and hence they are called as blind structure what we can call them as a blind structure okay now they are blind double walled cup structure now this is a cup shaped structure you can see you can see that is a cup shaped structure and it has got two walls this is the first wall this is the first wall and this is the second wall this is the outer wall so it has got two walls it has got two walls okay so what is blind bowman's capsule is a blind double walled cup shaped structure having two walls of bowman's capsule are the first one is inner that is visceral and the other one is parietal the inner and the parietal okay so this is about the bowman we have we are seeing a single bowman's capsule over here okay we are seeing a single bowman's capsule i think we have we should be doing uh, globulus first no issues we will be doing globulus afterwards no issues okay hmm so bowman x bowman's uh, capsule consists of two parts okay now the walls are of two two walls are there that is the inner that is the visceral wall visceral visceral wall and the parietal that is outer wall okay uh, next this both walls are single layered in nature you have to note it down both walls are single layered in nature both of the walls are single layered in nature okay now this is the visceral wall this is the visceral wall this is the visceral wall here you can see the one which is towards this glomerulus the one which is towards this glomerulus is my is my visceral wall while the other one over here this is the parietal wall this is the parietal wall okay this is the parietal wall okay and this wall which is basically forming a base to this glomerulus which is forming the base to this glomerulus is my is my inner wall or we can say visceral wall so we can say visceral wall its inner wall it's it's made up of flat squamous epithelium flat squamous epithelial now we can see flat squamous epithelial are basically tightly packed and here they will be responsible for the filtration write it down they are responsible for filtration so there are flat squamous epithelial cells on the periphery and specialized podocytes in the remaining part now what is the podocytes so here we can see these are the flat squamous epithelium present over here and they will be also having some specific cells called as podocytes what are these podocytes these are specialized cells in the visceral layers there are specialized cells in the visceral layer there are specialized cells in the visceral visceral layers which are present in bowman's capsule so what are what are podocytes let us see so what are podocytes podocytes are it's a specific layer it's a special layer which is it's a specially modified cells of of the inner wall of bowman's capsule inner wall of bowman's capsule okay so next is this podocytes will be having its extension this podocytes will be having some extensions which will be called as pedicels which will be called as pedicels so what is pedicels pedicels are some extensions of this podocytes pedicels are some extensions of this podocytes now this podocytes which are the epithelial lining of this bowman's capsule will be having some extensions which are called as pedicels which are nothing but interdigitated evaginations we can say they have the cells are basically getting filamentous form okay they are interdigitated evaginations called pedicels or we can say fit okay the pedicels rest over the basement membrane so here you can see this is the basement membrane this is the basement membrane upon which the pedicels will be resting upon which the pedicels will be resting okay so here we can see about the visceral layers okay now this pedicels are responsible for enclosing the slit pores or the filtration slit so these pedicels are the one which will be enclosing to so this 
this polocytes will be having some spaces present they will be having some pores present within them will be having pores present in them and these pores are basically enclosed by enclosed by filtration sheets or we can say pedicels are enclosed by pedicels the diameters of these pores or diameters of this filtration slits these pores are responsible for filtration of blood and hence they are called as filtration slits or we can say slit pores now they are enclosed by pedicels which are nothing but the imaginations of the podocyte and what are podocytes podocytes are the epithelial cells of the bowman's capsule visceral layer inner layer right now the diameter of each of this pore is around 25 nanometer the diameter of each of around each of each of the uh, <coughs> each of this filtration slit or pore is the 25 nanometer pedicels also possess contractive filaments which help in passage of filtrate through this filament filtration sheet so pedicels will be assisting for this filtration as well they will be assisting for the filtration as well because they will be having some filaments which are responsible for contraction so pedicels will be also helping out the inter filtration how because they have got some specifically specific filamentous structures which are responsible for causing the contraction which are responsible for causing the contraction okay so this was the visceral layer flat squamous epithelial having specialized podocyte cells and which has got pedicels which encloses the slits slits or we can say openings these openings are basically uh, for around 25 nanometer and it is also basically regulated or we can say are uh, are basically associated or assisted by pedicels which help in them in their contraction next is the parietal layer that is outer wall outer wall it consists of squamous epithelium again it will also consist of squamous epithelium and the space between these two layers of bowman's capsule is called as lumen or capsular space it is important now this is the inner layer and the outer layer and the space between them and the space between those both the layers and the space between these layers is called as it is called as lumen or capsular space it is called as lumen is called as lumen l u m e n lumen or we can call it as a capsular space capsular space okay so that was about the bowman's capsule next we will start the glomerulus next we will start the glomerulus now what is glomerulus so glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries formed by fine blood vessels lying in bowman's capsule so this these are the bowman's capsule and within this here we can see a specific tuft or we can say a aggregation or a group of capillaries uh, capillaries are present and where it is present it is present within the bowman's capsule within this bowman's capsule so this is a tuft of capillaries formed by fine blood vessels lying within the bowman's capsule lying in the bowman's capsule now glomerulus is the one which receives the blood from the afferent arteriole so we have seen the renal artery will be entering in the kidney okay and this renal artery will be now renal artery will be then deviating will be uh, branch will be forming the branches these branches are called as afferent arteriole so afferent a afferent arteriole will be taking the blood to the glomerulus and within this glomerulus the blood will be flowing through very high pressure okay because this afferent arteriole will be there this afferent efferent arteriole will be having less diameter due to which the blood will be flowing in very high pressure due to which the the fluid within this blood will be squeezed out the fluid between this blood will be squeezed out and will be collected in this blood in this bowman's capsule we'll see that how it happens okay so the in the glomerulus it's basically a tuft of capillaries where it receives the blood from the efferent arteriole and it basically gives away the blood through the efferent arteriole okay so next after we have seen the this the diameter of this efferent efferent artery will be less and hence the pressure will be high in this glomerulus okay now the blood has we have seen the letter has the that is letter which means that the efferent uh, efferent arteriole will have narrower diameter than the that of the afferent due to which it it will be basically under high pressure now the blood vessels of glomerulus are similar to those of blood capillaries and in being covered is covered by a single cell of endothelial cells here also they will be having single cells around 100 to 500 times more permeable with fenestrations or pores having a size of 50 to 100 so this 
ब्लड वेसल्स ऑफ ग्लोमरुलस विल बी बेसिकली हाईली परमिबल बिकॉज ऑफ अ स्पेसिफिक स्पेसिफिक फेनेस्ट्रेशन और पोर्स स्ट्रक्चर कॉलर्स फेनेस्ट्रेशन और पोर्स विल प्रेजेंट विच विल बी ऑफ अराउंड फिफ्टी टू हंड्रेड नैनोमीटर डायमीटर ओके नेक्स्ट इज मेल्फिजियन बॉडी नेक्स्ट इज मेल्फिजियन बॉडी सो दिस इज द मेल्फिजियन बॉडी दिस इज द मेल्फिजियन बॉडी ओके सो वॉट इज मेल्फिजियन बॉडी इट बेसिकली कंजिस्ट ऑफ इट बेसिकली कंजिस्ट ऑफ इट कंजिस्ट ऑफ द कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर्म बाय ग्लोमरस तो हियर दिस इज द ग्लोमरस इट्स द कॉम्प्लेक्स फॉर्म बाय ग्लोमरस कनेक्टेड टिश्यू and bowman's capsule a connective tissue will be connecting this both bowman's capsule and glomerulus so this structure having this bowman's capsule and this glomerulus which is connected with each other by the connective tissue is called as malphagian body or renal corpuscle malphagian body or we can say renal corpuscles we have seen this okay so what are the malphagian body renal corpuscles a complex formed by the glomerulus and bowman's capsule which are connected by connective tissue which are connected by connective tissue okay next is a proximal convoluted tubules in short we can call it as pct proximal convoluted convoluted tissue tubules now here you can see these are the pct these are the one you can say these are the pct proximal convoluted tubules it means so it's a lower part of the bowman's capsule it's a lower part of the bowman's capsule so this is the bowman's capsule here you can see this is the bowman's capsule and this bowman's capsule will be basically uh, will be uh, <coughs> carrying the uh, fluid within a, another tube and that tube is basically coiled in nature which is beneath this which is below this bowman's capsule and this is called as proximal convoluted tubules of pct so what are pct is the lower part of bowman's capsule which leads to the proximal convoluted tubule the pct is lying in the cortex region note it down the pct will be lying in the cortex region this is the cortex region we have seen this is the cortex region and this is the medullary region this is the medullary region so the major part of the pct will be lying in the cortical region okay now it is twisted and surrounded by peritubular capillaries so here these are highly twisted you can see it is basically forming coils it is forming coils so these coils are basically because they are highly twisted in nature okay they are so twisted and surrounded by peritubular capillaries so here you have to see what are peritubular capillaries so here you can see these are the proximal convoluted tubules which are present below this bowman's capsule and they are highly coiled and they are now surrounded by this peritubular peritubular capillaries peritubular capillaries okay so this this dash lines or dash like structures will be called as peritubular capillaries which are surrounding this pct okay so this pct is twisted and surrounded by peritubular blood capillaries now this pct is lined by cuboidal epithelium having brush borders with long microvilli for increasing absorption surface so this will be again why because it is responsible for absorption of the substances it is also responsible for absorption of substances from the fluid which is filtered from the fluid which is filtered okay so this pct is lined by cuboidal epithelial cells epithelial cells having a brush border with by brush border because it will be having the microvilli on the surface why this microvilli because microvilli will be increasing the surface area so that more amount of thing can be absorbed okay so that was about the pct proximal convoluted tubules okay next next is the okay one more thing is remaining now this cells the cells contain abundant mitochondria and food reserves for providing energy to perform active absorption and secretion so basically the function of this pct is to actively absorb the substances which are important for the body and should not be basically released out in the urine so they have to be actively absorbed sometime it may happen that the inner concentration will be high and outer will be low or we can so we it has to be moved from lower to higher concentration and that will be requiring energy that is atp okay so that can be also done by this structures now next after pct after pct the another is basically loop of henle the other one is the loop of henle now what are loop of henle here you can see this extended structure u shaped structure having two two tubules that is the one descending and the other one is ascending this is the which is coming downwards is the ascending the descending and the one which is going upward is called as descending and it both is are the this both are the constituents of the loop of henle this both are the part of loop of henle so what is loop of henle loop of henle is a hairpin loop like structural part of a 
nephron which descends into renal medulla so which descends into renal medulla okay now the loop of henle is made up of two parallel limbs joined by curved bases so here we can say they are basically formed by two base two parallel limbs like their limb forming a limb like structure this is one this is second one so this both will be basically present as a limb like structure and will be and this will be form connected by a curved base this will be having a curved this is a curved base right this is a curved base okay next there is a descending limb and the ascent so this both are the ascending and the descending limb okay so ascending is the one basically this is the ascending one this which is going upward and this is the descending one okay now first of all let us start the descending limb the descending limb is a continuation of the pct so once the pct terminates it will be starting into the descending limb so we don't we are not able to ex, ex, exclusively differentiate from where this actually the descending limb is starting okay but still when the twisting and the coiling is uh, absent then we can say straight structure is called as descending limb okay now it is again of two parts that is thick segment and thin segment it is again having two parts that is thick segment and thin segment here you will not be able to see in the diagram so here it is so here we can see this is a descending tubule descending tubule has got two parts this is a one part that is a thicker in nature thicker segment and this is a second part that is a thinner this segment guess how it is it is thinner so it will be consisting of two parts that is thicker and thinner segments okay thick segments constitute constitutes about 4 fifth of the descending limb so out of the fifth it will be fourth fifth part of the whole, whole descending limb will be will be constituting the thick segment while the other remaining part will be the thin segment so major part of the loop of henle will be will be basically descending uh, descending limb of loop of henle will be thick segment it lies both in the in the inside and inside cortex and medulla here you can see it is the one which is found in the both inside the cortex and the medulla okay the cell is lining a cuboidal and hence responsible for absorption particularly there are sparse microvilli so microvilli are present but not as much as the pct the pct will be having higher microvilli so they have sparse microvilli and fewer mitochondria because they will not be responsible for the active transportation so the number of microvilli will be less and they will be having less amount of mitochondria also so it is it is it is basically opposite to the pct in the case of pct the mitochondria were high and microvilli were high so it was because it was absorbing the things actively but here the microvilli are low and mitochondria are also few so we can say they would not be requiring energy for the transportation for the absorption so they would not be requiring the transport and energy for the absorption okay this segment is narrow and part of this this, this uh, thick segment is comparatively narrow in nature and hence basically it is narrow and thicker in nature it lies in the medulla and is lined by a flat epithelial cells having sparse as we have already seen this segments get curved to become part of ascending limb to so this segment will be getting curved afterward to become a part of ascending limb so this will be getting curved okay next is the ascending limb the one which is basically found here so this is the one here it will be connected to the dct it will be connected to the dct so here you can see so after this ascending this will be this is the descending uh, sorry this will be the ascending one this ascending limb will be basically of again two types thick ascending limb and thin ascending limb so this is the thin one which is basically not and uh, which will be the thin which will connect which is part of which is connected to the descending limb and this is the thick limb which is connected to the dct that is distal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule okay so that was about the uh, ascending tubule let us see so ascending tubule and des descending tubule is done next is ascending limb ascending limb consists of thin segment and proximal part and thick segment afterwards so here the thin segment will be first and then thick segment in the case of dct the thick segment was first and then it was thin segment okay so you have to be clear might you might get a question regarding the same a thin segment is lined by flat epithelial cells which allows passive diffusion so here you can see it allows only the passive diffusion it means it does not require atp for its transport it does not require atp so we can say it's it's basically passive in nature what all things are being reabsorbed over here so it's basically the sodium and chlorine mainly the ions like sodium and chlorine will be reabsorbed according to the concentration gradient okay so they will reabsorb 
depending upon the concentration gradient we have seen the thick segment as ascending limb is wider and lined by cuboidal cells so this thin segment was lined by mainly epithelial cells here it will it will be lined by it, that was lined by flat epithelial cells and the thick one will be lined by the cuboidal epithelial cells okay and they will be they will be also having microvilli and the mitochondria okay comparatively it will be high thick ascending segment is involved in active secretion active secretion of nacl in the medulla so they are mainly responsible for active secretion of nacl in the medulla okay so we will see during the process of how this neurin is formed there we will find how this absorption reabsorption will be taking place at different place at different place okay so next is the vessa recta vessa recta is basically uh, it's a staircase of network it's a staircase of network okay of blood capillaries it's basically a whole uh, trap or we can say a network of blood capillaries arising from efferent glomerulus so here you can see these are the vessa recta these are the vessa recta these are the vessa recta this okay from where it is arising it is arising from the efferent efferent arteriole it is arising from the efferent arteriole okay so let us see what is it it is basically a a network of blood capillaries arising from the efferent glomerul arterial arterial called vasa recta it's called as vasa recta right it is responsible for causing counter current mechanism it is responsible for causing counter current system now we will see in the formation of urine how this urine is formed during that particular topic we will see that what counter correct is we will see what the counter correct is and over there we will discuss that function and that particular process okay but right now you can note it down it is responsible for counter counter current mechanism it is responsible for counter current mechanism okay next this it's it forms a, we have seen uh, the loop of henle having ascending branch okay so basically the, it does not have much more thing it forms a counter current system with the loop of henle having ascending branch in the area of this this is something what we will see in the process particularly okay so vasa recta is basically formed by the blood capillaries which are forming a network around this uh, limbs uh, 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 around this loop of henle and this is known to be the one of the most important part of counter current system counter current system okay now afterwards we will be having this distal convoluted tubules that is dct okay so we are done with the uh, proximal then loop of henle and next will be the dct that is distal convoluted tubules so similar to the pct it is also highly coiled it is also highly coiled it is also highly coiled and part of nephron and lies close to malphagian body lies to close to malphagian body so this is the malphagian body this is malphagian body and it, this is the dct distal convoluted tubule so it is lying to the close to the malphagian body it is lying to the very close to the malphagian body the epithelial lining cuboidal cells have, having sparse microvilli and deep mitochondria as we have already seen so over here also the mitochondria will present very deeply and has got a large amount of microvilli particularly now they are covered by peritubular blood capillaries again they are covered by peritubular blood capillaries so that the whatever food whatever substances whatever the minerals are reabsorbed they should be reabsorbed to the blood capillaries also so these are also covered by this blood capillaries okay okay next <clears throat> next the last part of distal nephron is nearly straight called connecting or junctional tubule and open into collecting duct so you can see once it is basically formed so last one this is the part of the this is the part of dct which is connected this is part of dct which will be properly straight in nature okay this is the this is the last part of dct here we can say this is the one which is responsible for connecting to the collect, collecting tube this is connecting between the nephron and this collecting tube and it is normally it is straight in nature normally it is straight in nature okay so we have seen vasa recta and then dct now last one is the collecting ducts so once the all the nephrons will be collecting will be filtering the blood will be collecting some fluid and will be absor carrying out absorption carrying out reabsorption and at the last the substance which is not of use to the human body will be removed out okay and before removal it has to be passed through the urinary bladder before before releasing it out it has to be passed through urinary bladder okay and that will be again from ure ureter so the 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 fluid which is basically formed during the during the excretion in the kidney has to be transported outside so this collecting duct is the first tubular structure which will be collecting it collecting the urine which is formed 
not still we can call the urine but because still the absorption will take place but it will be the one where the all the <coughs> fluid will be collected from all the nephrons okay so here we can say collecting ducts each nephron is open into wider collecting tubule in area of cortex so every cortex every every nephron will be opening into collecting duct so here you can see this is the nephron opening into collecting duct this is nephron opening into collecting duct so all the of all the nephron will be opening into collecting duct okay now they are lined by cuboidal epithelium with very few microvilli because they are not very much playing very important role in the uh, absorption they open into still wider collecting ducts even this collecting duct will be further opening into more wider collecting duct here you can see the major collecting duct okay so that the 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 fluid which is formed has to be taken out through the ureter okay the collecting ducts enter medulla and forms a ducts of Bar so a collecting ducts may enter the medullary region and this will be called as this will be called as ducts of balini ducts of balini okay now next is this duct the ducts run through the renal pyramids this ducts will be run, running through the renal pyramids so this collecting ducts will be throughout limb moving will be will be connected with all the renal pyramids through which it will be getting the secretions of the not secretion but it will be getting the fluid from the nephrons which will be further converted into urine now let us see the whole route of urine flow whole route of urine flow keep it in mind when we are talking about root flow of urine urine okay not the formation of urine okay so let us see first of all it was formation glomerulus then it 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 glomerulus received the blood from the afferent tubule and afferent arteriole and then afferent arteriole get into the glomerulus the glomerulus here the the tubules will be the the capillaries will be under high pressure the blood will be flowing under very high pressure due to which the fluid will be squeezed out and will be collected into bowman's capsule uh, from this bowman's bowman's capsule this a fluid will be taken to the proximal conduit tubules that is PCT where it will go for descending limb of the loop of Henle and then the ascending limb of loop of Henle where the reabsorption, absorption and the exchange of uh, different type of minerals will be taking place. This ascending limb will be now giving out its uh, giving out its uh, fluid into the conduit tubule, the DCT which is again coiled in nature. The PCT and DCT are coiled. Okay and this will be further taking into the collecting tube where it, the collecting duct will be taking this fluid into the minor calyx, minor calyx to major calyx and last one into the ureter. So it will be this the fluid which is formed in the ureter in the glomerulus will be passing through different stages and at every stages it will be get, almost every stages at almost every stages it will get absorbed, reabsorbed, absorbed, reabsorbed so that the maximum amount of minerals which are important for the body has to be taken up and the substances which are not body for, for good for body or which are basically toxic for the body or are the um, metabolic waste will ha has to be removed out through the excretion so this is what we have seen in the next lecture we will study further about the physiology of excretion or we can say the mechanism of urine formation how exactly this urine is being formed that's all thank you